Hey, Sam Sini here. It's time for another episode of Game Theory. We're going to break down Rocco Zakarski tape today. Rocco Zakarski is a guy that is seen as a very real potential first round pick in the 2025 NBA draft. Somebody that other uh, experts in the field have rated as a potential lottery pick. I've never quite been there with Rocco, just to be completely transparent, but a player that I'm really interested in. He's seven foot three. He is probably around 240-ish, 250-ish pounds. Moves well, has good hands for somebody who is as big as he is. Comes from this unbelievable athletic lineage where his father is a former Olympic medalist in swimming. His mother is an iron woman. They're both really, really great people. And he has a bit of a swimmer's body, which shouldn't come as a surprise. Kind of higher hips, long legs. But he is still a player very much worth tracking and a guy that I would say will play in the NBA at some point. I feel quite confident of that. It's just at what level as we kind of go through this and decide. So let's jump in. We're going to break down the game that he played for the Brisbane Bullets against the Sydney Kings this past weekend. He ended up with 11 points, five rebounds, one block in this game. Worth talking about because it's the most that he's played in a game this season. It's been the most productive he's been this season. So let's just kind of jump in and take a look at the tape so here we go you're gonna see him come up he's gonna set a screen one thing i will say at the blitz that was a little bit frustrating with rocco is that his screens weren't awesome i thought that he kind of slipped a little bit too early but here you can see him really try to make a concerted effort hey let's make sure we're making impact on these screens does get a little bump on isaiah lay off of there at the top not necessarily an awesome screen but he gets enough of it rolls in to the area, ends up trying to seal Cam Oliver briefly. He's going to come up. He's going to set this little screen here. He's going to roll. Tries to seal high. Doesn't work. But ends up getting the rebound and draws the foul. One thing I will say here, just in terms of, hey, he goes up, high points this ball. And this is just something with Rocco in general, I don't think he does an awesome job of maintaining his position through contact yet. I think personally, that is a function of the fact that he has high hips. For instance, look at how high his hips are there compared to Cameron Oliver here. Oliver's just lower, allows him to really move Rocco on that first contact, right? So here he is, bump. He's able to kind of push him back a little bit. He ends up getting the foul call there because that's an enormous size mismatch. It's like seven inches in terms of size. He goes to the line. You'll get to see here just like a little mini view of the shot mechanics, right? We're going to get to see a full breakdown. He actually took and made a three in this game. So we'll get a chance to talk a little bit more about his mechanics later, but Pretty clean release there, right? You know, this is a guy that struggled really, really heavily to shoot free throws last season. And this year, I think that the shot looks a lot more in alignment in general. I feel better about the shot uh, being able to not make him a liability from the foul line, at least. So far, he's made 90% of his free throws. He's only taken 11 of them, has made all 10 of the, or has made 10 of those 11. Next one coming down. Here you can see him. I like that he's kind of presenting just a really solid target there for Josh Bannon. Bannon decides to take the shot. Again, you're going to going to see the work rate on the offensive glass. Really, really excellent work rate on the offensive glass. He's always very productive as a rebounder. You can always trust that he's going to hit the glass very hard. I like the way that he tracks the ball in the air here. I like the way he makes good use of kind of like that little tap there just to get the ball out of cam oliver's hands but look at how he's tracking the ball here you can see him even though he's getting he has a body on him i wouldn't say it's like an immense box out or anything but he has a body on him and you can see that the eyes here are tracking the ball bad arrow eyes here are tracking the ball he's trying to figure out where exactly it's going to end up I like that little tap there. Tries to go up with the left, like kind of weird behind the back outside hand deal. 
but instead he kind of fades away again, throws up that little shot off the glass. I think that one actually has like a decent amount of touch, just ends up kind of spinning out, unfortunately. But yeah, the touch around the basket is something with Rocco that I think generally, uh, especially on the move, especially when he's playing through contact, especially when he is trying to do kind of multiple things like catch and finish all in one motion. You do see the touch let him down a little bit at times around the rim. This is a tough action for Rocco, right? He's a seven foot three center and Xavier Cooks, this guy here played for the Wizards last year for a minute, probably the best player in the NBL. Just not another way to put that. So Sydney here is just running like this inverted, you know, one five action basically, right? Where they're trying to screw up how Isaac White and Rocco are going to defend this shot and defend this action. They just kind of go under it. I like how engaged Zakarski is here playing in drop. Cooks is not an immense shooter, so I do like the fact that he's playing in drop. And one thing that I think you guys will see throughout the course of this tape is that it was pretty clear that Brisbane's game plan going in, I felt like, was to kind of close out short on some of Sydney's perimeter players. Cam Oliver there over in the corner here. Xavier Cooks here. Uh, you know, Kelly Leo Pepe, we'll see later on. It just felt like they weren't wildly interested necessarily in guarding these guys. This is a fun little action that you can see developing as well. It's a dribble handoff. They kind of have Leofa go through the action first to make it seem like he's going to be the one that gets the handoff. And instead, ball's going to come back here to Jalen Adams. Just that little minor misdirection. Full drop for Zakarski here. Thought this one was interesting just to put on to showcase how deep of a drop they are playing him in. Look at how deep he is into the paint here. This is, you know, what what do we want to call that? The 12 foot mark, maybe. And then here, you know, ball screen again. He never really leaves that 12 foot area, despite the fact that Adams has that really, really excellent floater game there that he can get to from time to time. I like that Zakarski gets a body on Cooks there. I'm guessing that it is a defensive strategy for Brisbane to just basically let this shot go. Get the you know backpedal contest here where Zakarski's momentum is going back. He's going to try and control the glass, but also has this arm up here. Probably has like a seven foot five wingspan. Not overly long, but you know, given that he is seven foot three, but long enough to where that's going to be able to at least make a slight impact here. Backpedals, locates where Cooks is here. You can see his eyes are trying to find Cooks so you can get a body on him, box out. That's about as textbook as it's going to get on the glass. That's absolutely excellent work to close down that possession. Overall, I think that's a really positive possession. This one here, going to come through. Again, deep drop. And this one is one where he does get caught in no man's land. So... He's trying to backpedal. But because Adams does an awesome job here of just kind of carving out this space against Mitch Norton, kind of uses that little off arm there and then creates momentum this way. It forces Zakarski to kind of stay attached here for that extra split second. which opens up cooks. Now this is where we're going to get into like the nitty gritty of positioning in ball screens, right? Where I think Zakarski doesn't do a superb job here, but he ends up fouling and kind of having to lunge in general. Zakarski is kind of a lunger right now, which isn't ideal, but where do we go wrong here? We go wrong here because I think he goes up thinking he's going to try and block this. You can kind of see his legs gearing up. He has that bend. He has that bend here. You can see the arms kind of going back. It feels like he's going to try and gear up to jump and block this shot, right? 
But what happens is he pulls himself into this really awkward position here once Adams is not going to shoot this ball and once he realizes what's going on. There isn't really a circumstance where as a rim protector in the center who is ostensibly playing drop coverage and has to be responsible for at least knowing where your man is and being accountable in some respect, where you want to your left leg out here in front of your right leg and have your back turned to the man you have to be responsible for here. So this is technical stuff. Really what you would like to see Zakarski do here is you want to see him continue to slide, right? So here he's doing this weird kind of stuff with his top foot where it feels like he's trying to like engage Adams with the top foot here. And instead he again, just continues to give up that top foot, right? Like he continues to place the top foot here guards in the NBA guards in the NBL. They're just going to be able to attack your top foot a little bit regularly. If you're not completely on balance, you would like to see Zakarski slide here. You'd like to see him not end up with his back to his man. I think a little bit too often he tries to go left and left foot ahead in order to open up that left arm to try and go for a block. Instead of here where he kind of like goes up, like he's going to try and jump and then he realizes that Adams is going to stay down. I think he just needs to slide here, slide, slide here. one extra stride down that way, push off off of his left foot and slide to his right. That way his hips are still open so that if Adams, let's get back to this, does make this little pitch back pass here, which is now available, he just can slide back. His hips are open. He can use his length to recover. Instead, he now has to completely turn his hips here and jump back to the ball like that. I would like to know after watching Rocco and Tui tape back to back, if this jump to the ball technique is something that the center of excellence, the academy here in Australia is teaching. I would prefer that players slide and stay on the ground as opposed to take this like big looping jump guys in the NBA and professional basketball players just too athletic, but because he takes this jump here, it kind of kills his momentum, right? He's stuck on the ground, right? His cooks is going up for this shot. He goes up to try to block it, kind of loses control of his body a little bit. You can clearly see he's making contact with the lower half here. Cooks, his leg is splayed out that way. Just technically, I think Rocco needs to do a better job of not trying to lunge with the left foot and get the left foot out in front. It needs to do a better job of staying on balance with both feet underneath of him and sliding. And this is something that, again, he's 18 years old. He'll work on these things. He has a lot of tools. It's just going to take some time. This one, again, just drop coverage, drop. I think he does a pretty good drop job there and drop of backpedaling, cutting off this gap here with Cam Oliver, but also staying in touching distance of Tyler Robertson. I think here he even does a good job of kind of baiting Robertson here. He kind of shoulder fakes at him while backpedaling kind of jumps up like that with the shoulder goes forward, but then actually like kind of pushes back a little bit to take away the lob. He almost baits that lob pass from Tyler Robertson there. 
Robertson goes for the little floater instead. I think that Zakarski thinks he's going for the lob there, which is why he jumps and engages Oliver. And instead, he just like kind of gets stuck on the ground. Unfortunately, Deng Adele misses the box out on Xavier Cooks. And then he makes a poor decision, goes up, ball hits the backboard, gets called for a goaltend here. Honestly, I'm not totally sure what he's thinking here. This is just very clearly a goaltend. You can't do that. I think maybe he thinks it's below the rim line, but there's just no real reason to kind of put yourself in that position, unfortunately. So bit of a messy start here in the first quarter. That was his first run of play. Second one here. This is the one that I had mentioned previously where I said that sometimes I think he gets a little bit sped up. And when he has to like catch and finish and do everything all in one move, it just looks like he kind of loses a bit of the touch that he has. It just feels like he's very sped up, right? So this is one where he has a massive size advantage on Kelly Leia Pepe. Leia Pepe is one of the strongest players in the NBL, but is like six foot six, right? So this is, you know, something like an eight to nine inch, you know, height advantage here. So he catches the ball, catches it high, keeps it high, which I like, but I think he just rushes it, right? It just feels like he never kind of gets his, gets his balance, gets his feet underneath him, right? It just feels like he goes so fast. He thinks everything has to come so quickly and doesn't realize, hey, you've kind of got this extra split second here. There's only so high that he can get here. You have like a little, you don't have a full second to stop and gather, but you have a split second just to stop and slow things down in your head just a little bit. Instead, he kind of throws it off the glass there awkwardly off the rim, goes for the rebound. We're going to come down again here. And again, I ask about that little hop to the ball technique. He kind of does that jump to the ball thing. We mentioned this with Tui saying that Tui doesn't have this. Doesn't have enough margin for error really to be able to jump to the ball like that and lose your momentum. Zakarski jumps to the ball here. His feet are going this way. It just opens up such an easy driving angle for Leia Pepe. In general, I would argue that probably Zakarski's scramble defense and his overall, you know, kind of team defense rotationally is a little bit more of a worry for me right now, as opposed to the like just general drop defense that he's playing in ball screens or the rim protection, right? This one, like he just, this is it's way too easy again to attack that top foot. Way too easy for Leia Pepe here, who isn't like some unbelievable ball handler but he can attack that front foot way too easily. Zakarski, I think like does an okay job of recovering here, but it gets bumped, ends up kind of staying on the ground there because he gets bumped, doesn't explode all the way up, doesn't really contest the shot quite well enough and Leia Pepe finishes around him. But the real issue there was the closeout. The closeout was just a little bit too poor. This one, again, we're in drop in this like little ball screen action here, this little rub. Skarsky falls all the way back here. I think he was like back here originally and then has just taken the step forward. That makes me think that this is a schematic choice to leave Kelly Lea Pepe open and just get a late closeout. And again, like he just comes out so kind of awkwardly there. The, the closeout technique in general is going to need a lot of work for Zakarski. I, I don't know what, I don't know what that is. I'm just going to be completely honest. I don't know. I don't know where he would have kind of been taught that, you know, he's kind of jumping out, trying to stay high. And ultimately the reason I think that he gets locked in this kind of awkward spot is because Leia Pepe drove on him last possession, right? So here, I think he's trying to stay solid, thinks that there might be a closeout coming, 
and then realizes, no, he's actually just going up for the shot. He makes this kind of lunging motion here to go out and try and contest ends up being too late again. Like he's just kind of in between decisions right now as an 18 year old playing professional basketball. This one you know, he's already down the court here asking for the ball gets the little dump off. This is where I think he can be super successful. A, I think he runs the court super well. He plays hard. He's going to be able to get down the court. What I like about this one, just this little action here between Bannon and Isaac White. So Bannon's going to come and set this little screen here. White's going to come around and try and get into the paint. I love how Isaac White opens this angle up for Rocco to be able to catch and finish. When he can catch and finish above the rim, it's easier. I'll also mention like this, this is a below the waist pass basically from Isaac White. He has to go down and get it and then bring it all the way back up. It's a good catch. It's a good finish all in one motion. Very quick. I think we're on like four or five points now for Rocco. I think four. This one I put on here just because you know, this is just like an early kind of screen action here. You can see that Casey Prather, who is the wing here, is I think telling Rocco, hey, like step up, step up. And he just opens the angle instead, right? Again, this, this is where I think Rocco needs to work on his slides. He kind of backpedals here. And I don't really know why he takes this backward step again. I'm not totally sure. Because really what he should be doing here is just pushing off of this foot here. And just sliding, right? You could even slide backward a little bit if you don't feel super confident. You can start your back pedal in drop. And instead, that left foot ends up out of the paint for some reason. Again, this is technical stuff. The technique matters. These little details matter. But against professional players, you can't open up this angle. Tyler Robertson averaged like 16 points a game or something last year at Portland. He's a good player, and he is a bench player in the NBL. You can't open up that angle and just expect that you're going to be able to go get it. He can't do it. Ends up being two points. Again, just comes down to these little technique-based flaws. Next up, get a screen into a rescreen. I grabbed this one just to show like, hey, even when he does you know, the right things here, which I would argue this is a great possession in terms of him doing the right things. This is a great screen on the initial action. I think that's actually a pretty okay screen on the second one. Like he at least makes contact, right? I don't know if his guard does a great job of kind of going around the screen at a great angle for him there, but he makes contact in here. I mean, Tyler Robertson again, does a good job getting his hands high, right? This isn't the easiest entry pass in the world, but he has Xavier cook sealed here. This needs to go in. You got to find a way to open an angle here and get the ball in. You can even kind of see, I think, that I believe that might be Keandre Cook is saying reverse it here. I think that's what his pointing is. I think he's pointing with this hand here to say reverse it around get it to Mitch Norton and Norton can throw the ball in for an entry because he has Cook sealed here. That doesn't happen. Bateman kind of just holds the ball for a while. Rocco that time sets like a little goofy slip screen, which doesn't really do anything. And then we're out and it's a transition opportunity. So I put that in just to note like, hey, even in these moments, sometimes on offense, Brisbane's guards are not particularly great in terms of distribution. 
I wouldn't expect necessarily him to get a ton of easy buckets this season on rolls. If we look up and he has like 20 points all season on rolls to the rim, just don't get totally stunned by that is why I've put this clip in here. All right. Now this one, again, Xavier Cooks, they're running like an inverted offensive play here where Cooks at the five is handling the ball. As you can see, again, my read here is that they are clearly very comfortable. You know, he goes up and contests, kind of makes this ball go out. Rocco tracks the shooter again, gets out to Cooks. Rocco's there, same side helping. Sometimes this would be a bad choice. This is a guess on my part. I'm not going to sit here and tell you I've been in Brisbane's meetings, but I would guess that the scout says to leave Xavier Cooks open from three. And the reason I say that the scout probably said to do that is because it seems like the Brisbane bench here, someone on the bench, I don't know who, is daring Xavier Cooks to shoot because Cook shoots and you get no clothes out there from Rocco. And then he turns right to the bench and says something to them, which my guess is that somebody said something to him, daring him to shoot it. And he turned and looked and had something to say for the Brisbane bench uh, up 20. So, you know, when, when you see there that Zakarski doesn't really go out and close out, right. And he's helping same side. It is worth the context of just saying my guess here is that that was the scout was to not necessarily close out on Xavier Cooks. Maybe I'm wrong. I would be totally willing to admit that I'm wrong. Even so, I will note that, again, he just feels awkward closing out right now, right? kind of gets stuck between steps, doesn't really know what he wants to do. Sometimes he's lunging. Sometimes he's taking short choppy steps out like that there. Bump, ba -dump, ba -dump. Just a lot of work to do on the closeout technique for Zakarski. This one, little bobble on the catch, eventually gets it, finishes. I like here that he opens himself up and tries to create this angle. You know, look, this is simple, right? You know, you see the cutter. Cutter cuts back door here. You know, you're definitely taught to flash middle here if you're the big, right? But he does it. He flashes for the guard here. Bobbles it, though. Has Jalen Galloway reaching in. It's Galloway has Tyler Robertson there does end up fading away a little bit instead of trying to go through Tyler Robertson throws the ball up off the glass again like when he gathers and gives himself just like that extra little split second is a, and gets his feet underneath him right so like the difference between this one here to me and the last one is that, yes, he's kind of wrong footed, right? He goes up and kind of ends up having to like twist in the air and get himself into alignment, but he's a little bit more on balance there. And the ball is just able to come out of his hand with just like that little bit of extra touch, right? Overall, just a little bit cleaner, a little bit better, but obviously you'd like to see him catch the ball on the first time. This one, you know, again, in drop. Look, I would venture that if you ask Justin Schuler, the Brisbane coach over there, he's probably pretty okay. If Tyler Robertson's going to beat us on floaters, then we that's what we have to live with as a shot. Tyler Robertson can do that. Like He's a really good player. He was really, really good at Portland. But... You know, I like here, like he's in, he's in decent position here. And I like that he's like in touching distance. I like that he's there. It's just that 
Xavier Cooks is rolling. This this is one where if you're a big man in the NBA, if you're a big man in the NBL, if a guy's going to beat you with a 14 foot floater, like a running, you know, goofy shot where you're in touching distance, you might want to see him maybe keep that hand up just like an extra split second longer here, right? You know, keep that hand in that position while you're backpedaling as opposed to swinging the arm down. and not really contesting at all while you backpedal and try to get back onto Cooks, who is your responsibility rolling. At the end of the day, that's the shot that you're going to have to live with if you're a big. That's really the shot you're trying to get the offensive player to take in today's you know professional basketball ecosystem. This one catches and just absolutely tries to toss Tyler Robertson out of the club here while trying to seal and makes it way too obvious. But this one, you know, look, I like the one-handed catch there. I think he has good hands. I do think that by and large, Rocco does catch the ball well. I like that he's comfortable enough to put the ball on the deck once. And I like here that he sees the seal coming, right? Like, I like that, you know, he has Quatnoy on his back here. I like that he sees that he has a chance to just make this, you know, little seal action with this little in paint screen on Robertson and look like Robertson probably does sell it a little bit, but it's just not particularly good screening technique, right? Like the legs are kind of splayed out a little bit and he's kind of leaning the shoulder in, right? I like the idea. I hope that he continues to do stuff like this. This is stuff that NBA bigs have to do. They have to be able to seal and make space for the, their bigs or for their guards. I'm sorry. They're driving into the paint. He just makes this one too obvious and like even throws the arms out a little bit here. He's not afraid to be physical. I don't think that that's the case. I know it's not the case. Like he's willing to make contact. Just makes this one a little too obvious. I think there's a little kind of screen in the paint. Yep. Yep. Can't do it. Foul gets called. Turnover. This one, you know, here, weak side. He's on Quat Noy. Again, that little jump at the player close out. So ball's going to come back around. Lay off uh, there. And he has to cover this ground out. I would like to see steps out. I would not like to see a jump out like he gives. So he, the jump out, what do we say in the last video with Tui? If you jump and your feet are in the air, you are not in control. You have no control of your body. You have no control to be able to stop and slow this guy down. Noy gets by. I mean, really, if, you know, the, the pass you would like to see Quat Noy here make is fairly obvious. You can see Tyler Robertson pointing to it, man. Shout out Tyler Robertson. That is a guy who's shooting 50% from three so far this year. And Alex Tui, it's probably just got to be a kick out, but Hey, shot misses. In this one, he just kind of ends up getting caught in no man's land. This is a little tough on him too, you know. If a guy's going to slip this quickly, he at least does have to be somewhat responsible here for the guard. I would argue personally that his positioning this is this is really where 18 years old like this stuff's going to happen i would say his original position probably needs to be like there with his two feet so that he is actually cutting off that pocket pass area because at the end of the day you have help here the only place that you can get beat here if you trust your tagger is with that quick pocket pass. 
because Cam Oliver is a downhill freight train. So once that pass comes, if you don't use your length to cut off that pocket pass there. See, I like that his arm's up. I like that he sees it. He's just very slightly, I think, off in positioning. And that is 100% something that will come. Like you can even see it a little bit better here. He's just a little bit off of his line in terms of where his line needs to be in drop here. Like he's almost, you know, not, not in between the player and the rim, right? He's almost like a little bit to the right of the ball handler and the rim here. So again, that one is definitely a small technical thing that I think will get sorted out with age, but it's going to take some time. He still needs to work on it. Now we're getting into the end of the game. As you can see, and this is a, this is a blowout. This is a 25 point game, right? I do not believe Sydney scores again. And Brisbane does work to at least get this thing back competitively. And Rocco is a big piece of that. This is by far the best play of his game. I mean, this is fantastic. This is exactly what you're hoping to see from Rocco as he continues to grow and develop. So this one goes out, sets the screen, rolls. I mean, again, you would hope that a guard could just hit him as a roller there, but that's not the reality with these Brisbane guards this year. Uh, this one, he catches the ball on the block. Eyes are up, hits the cross corner pat or cross wing pass. I like that he steps out, giving Bateman that ability to attack his man there. Once he realizes that Bateman has beaten his man, basically one on two. So he vacates the space, steps out to the corner. And honestly, I think that shot looked very clean from being transparent. I thought that looked great. I thought the shot prep was great. Look at him get himself gathered underneath, right? Like gets the legs underneath kind of going in rhythm has good rhythm on the shot and it goes right. He gets the luck of the bounce on some level, but look, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that I think Rocco Zakarski should be taking multiple threes per game. Absolutely do not do that. But I think that this is a developable thing where if we looked up in a few years and Rocco was capable of hitting an occasional three, I wouldn't be stunned by that, right? Like it looks pretty clean coming out of the left hand, right? That's what we want. So this one here, look at the feet, look at him slide his feet. There we go. Right. That's the best thing we've seen yet. Defensively, I would argue. So he steps out, again, gives up the front foot here, gives up the top leg, but keeps his momentum moving, right? Slides back, stays in front, gets the chest out. That's perfect. That's the exact kind of rep that we can build on with Rocco, right? That's the exact kind of thing that we want to see. We want to see him get better at things like that, guarding in space, cutting off drives in space. Again, like there are technical things that we can nitpick here, but this, this to me is a hands high, sliding, feet active, chest in front, slides to cut off, right? Instead of trying to turn and run or have one foot way in front of the other, he here just has the left foot slightly in front of the right and it allows him to slide instead of having to turn and run. That's what we're looking for from Rocco on defense. That's perfect. This one, again, kind of like a in-between closeout there. Jumps to the ball again on a closeout. We got to stop doing that. Drop, cuts off the two-e drive. Goes, tracks the ball, gets the defensive rebound. Now, other than that, like that little lunge there probably isn't ideal just because an NBA player will be able to attack that. But, you know, again, look, stays in front, 
slides his feet, goes up, tracks the ball. Now we're cooking. Like now we can work with this. Like we can, we can work with somebody who is seven foot three, has active feet, has length, can stay in front of somebody. These are the flashes where it's like, okay, we're excited here. Like we're, we're pumped. Like we can build off of this. Right. So this one here runs the court, gets in. Tui ends up having to kind of vacate here, right? So you can see, I think Tui genuinely is communicating here and trying to pass it off to Cam Oliver because this should be Cam Oliver's guy. Rocco is Cam Oliver's guy, and that really just needs to be a, I need to be able to get back out to that corner. Otherwise, we're definitely giving up a shot. And I think that Oliver just kind of falls asleep there. Yeah, that's definitely what happens. You, you can see that Tui's trying to talk to him the whole way from the back, and I think that he just ends up kind of falling asleep there. And look, like, you don't want to vacate the rim. Like, I'm not going to sit here and absolve Tui of this either. But you can even see early on here, he's trying to tell Oliver... to switch probably left too early though, regardless, given that he was going out to the weak side, easy bucket there for Rocco though. And then this one, this one might be the last one, get a nice little rotation over where Rocco recognizes he's stuck here on Tyler Robertson. And look at that, just like beautiful help rotation over, realizing that I think that's James Bateman there. There's no way Bateman's going to be able to deal with Cam Oliver. Bateman goes and like helps off on the drive even. And I just love the anticipation there. I think it's super sharp. Really, really smart that he's able to kind of track this ball get over and swat this shot. Honestly, I think that that's where we can call it on Rocco. Look, I think that what this tape kind of shows more than anything is just that Rocco's a project, right? This is going to take time. He's still 18 years old. He just turned 18 in August. He's so young that if he was a 2026 NBA draft prospect, he would still be 19 on draft day in 2026. So I don't know what's going to happen with Rocco the rest of the year. He's the backup on this team behind Tyrell Harrison. He's going to play somewhere. It seems like between 10 and 15 minutes on any given night, depending on uh, his foul trouble or Tyrell Harrison's foul trouble or any number of factors here. There are real areas where you can see the flashes and you go, okay, I can see how this, how this guy can become a really solid center in the NBA at some point. He's seven foot three. He has decent feet whenever he has them moving and he's able to guard in space and you know he can cut off drives at times. Like th there are some real tools here. There are tools more than anything else, I would argue. The technique just has to showcase real genuine improvement. Based off of this tape, and you know, look, we're so far from the end of the season, right? Hopefully over the course of the next four or five months, we're going to see somebody that looks totally different in context here. But based off of this tape, if he was to enter the 2025 NBA draft, I would be a little bit worried that he would get lost in the shuffle early in his NBA career because the little mechanical stuff, the technical stuff, the know-how, he is just behind there right now. But the good news for Rocco is that we're still a lot of time away from when this NBA draft is plenty of time for him to kind of work through some of those technical question marks, plenty of time for him to work through, uh, you know, just learning exact positioning. It's all going to come down to the details for guys like this. You have to be elite at the details. You have to be elite as a screener. You have to be elite at your positioning and drop coverage. You have to be elite in knowing your angles. Bigs take a little bit longer than guards do. I would just, preach patience with Rocco more than anything. I don't do this video to, you know, shit on the guy or anything. 
he's just young playing in a professional league in a way that is very, very difficult right now. And it will be fun to track what he looks like by the end of the year after hopefully something like 400 minutes of playing time in the NBL. As of right now, it's a work in progress. Hopefully that work will be done so that later in the year we can see the results. This has been Game Theory. Please remember, rate, review, subscribe, do anything you can to support the show. We'll be back later this week. I might do a breakdown of a rookie at some point in the NBA now that we're starting to get some preseason action. Might do uh, just you know another podcast here coming up. Keep it locked here. Until next time, we'll talk soon.